Thank you. 
Okay, two minutes. We're closing in. I'm trying to be punctual. Plus, he doesn't enjoy a little jiff me bobbing around with a pin. Boop. Who said 33 year old grown men with beards can't be cute in little animated things? <laughs> animation master. Yeah, super animation master. I think we're good to go. Well, hello for everyone who is tuning in. This is Heath Foley for my, I'm going to call this my second official stream because my first one had no audio, no music, no frame, uh, no idea. But I did some fun doodling. So that was cool. Um, today, I'm going to work on doing line work. Roland here. Uh, last time I did this, uh, I just got the flat colors down, which um, always takes a decent amount of time, but uh, today we're doing line work. And sometimes I can take longer, but we'll see. All right. So, oh god, need to adjust things. <sighs> All right, there we go. Um, sometimes when I'm doing line work, especially with wander characters and whatnot. Um, what I used to do, because I used to, I went to school for comic book art and worked in that field for literally three months, I think. <laughs> um, I got really used to doing line work on things and I really enjoyed doing line work on things. Um, and I always kind of missed that when I went over to full on digital painting. So when I started working on wander, the idea was, you know, why can't I do line work, but also kind of make it more illustrative, digital painting, all that kind of thing. Um, so what I did is I found a brush in Photoshop. Uh, it's a tool preset for the brush tool, and it's called Conti. Um, basically, it almost kind of replicates a chalk-like texture, which you guys can see here, you know. And I've always really liked it. Um, so when it comes to the line work for this stuff, this is kind of the way I go. Um, on top of that too, I don't just do black and white line art. I actually take line art and I take the color and find a really dark variation of it. So I'm actually doing, um, I think it's called a color hold. Um, there's two ways to do that. You can either do really clean, crisp, like inking comic book lines. Um, yeah, you can either do really clean, crisp uh, comic book lines for this kind of stuff and then color them after the fact, or you can do them live beforehand. I kind of prefer to do them live, but that's just me. So anyways, oh yeah, that's a shine layer. So I'll tell you what, let's rename some stuff. Flats, as in the color flats. I'm going to make a new layer over here. We're going to call this Colored Line Art. Alright, so... So the cool thing about this kind of working method too is that I when I'm laying down colors and stuff um, I don't really have to worry about the line and where it lies because I'm making the line after the fact so I can kind of let the color and do adjustments let the color do where the lines need to go and make adjustments as I do this I'm also still trying to keep some of those basic comic book mentalities with this stuff. So in the sense of doing thick to thin, kind of brushy line work if it's possible. Yeah, do a little bit. He's got a leather collar here, so I'm gonna just 
add a bit of a hint of it existing. Yeah. Technically, since it is a bit of a thicker material, I should probably carry that through here. Looks like it's more naturally kind of curving around. Sweet. And I mean, you can already tell, like it, it makes a pretty significant difference once you start doing it. And typically the mentality with doing line work for me is, you know, if you're outlining kind of big shapes like this collar, sticking out right here. Like this is a pretty big shape, so I'm gonna try and use a slightly thicker line, and I'm doing this all via my um, Wacom monitor and pen tool. Like you can start a really thin line, and then you can work into a thicker line. The idea is like varying between this and this pretty much the entire time. I don't wanna to go too extreme through the whole time. Otherwise, forgive me if it's just a rambling, incoherent mess of words. I'm still kind of getting comfortable doing all this. It's weird to think I'm a little anxious about drawing all day. Oh no, that's the worst. I do have an audience. By the way, welcome everyone who is checking this out and watching it. I appreciate it. Uh, let's add a little character here. One thing is real materials have nicks, dings, tears, cuts, all that sort of stuff. I try and not play it up too much. I just want to look like these guys go out on adventures and do stuff. There's the World of Warcraft method where there's a chip in the armor and it's the size of a small meteorite that looked like it crashed down into the player doing stuff. And again, you see the size of those weapons and glowy things that they uh, smash each other with. It makes a lot of sense. Actually, you know what? This wouldn't be here because it is facing away from the viewer. Yep, that makes more sense. Alright, well, I've got a lot of this brown in here, so I'm just going to kind of keep this going. So sometimes when I'm not just outlining a thing, I do a slightly thicker line. The idea being that because it's on where I'm going to perceive the shadows are going to be, you can actually use your line art as a way to kind of show that shadow to a certain degree. So like in my mind, this is a thicker material, so I'm going to just throw a bit of a thicker line on the base there. Yeah, let's add stitches too, why not? It's made of real materials, so it's got stitches. It's a little detail, but it goes at this decent distance. By the way, I know this artwork, or this line work is essentially <laughs> black line work, but uh, it's got a little color. A little bit 
there. Eh, let's see. A little bit there too. That looks nice. to imply that this thing's got some degree of thickness to it. This is probably way too extreme. And it looks a little bit better. Oh, hello Lily. One of my doggos, Lily, just walked in. If you guys hear any loud smacking noises or something that sounds like it's beating a door, that's her tail from being so happy. And you just licked me, big girl. All right, go on. Go on, I love you. Go. Get out. All the way. Keep going. There you go. <laughs> All right. She is sweet. The other one, Lola, will probably wander in here at some point or another. And she'll probably prop her head up on my knee while I'm working and be fussy that I'm not petting her. And I will give her the pets, and she will still not leave. And that is okay. It's also kind of a good idea to zoom out every now and then just to take a look and make sure. Things look in order, nothing looks way out of place. Yeah. Actually, this is going pretty quick. We might get to actual shadows today. What? By the way, if anyone watching has any questions, feel free to ask. Because if not, I'm probably just going to start yammering on about some kind of nonsense here soon. Start talking about medieval weaponry or... Actually, I do that to my wife every now and then. She loves it. By she loves it, I mean she it's a hardcore eye roll. She laughs, but... Like, did you actually know that medieval plate mail was highly mobile? It only weighed about 45 pounds. And you had a full range of motion in it. Alright, all kidding aside, it is really cool to watch a grown adult get inside one of those things and then like start dead sprinting. It's wild. It makes medieval battles a lot more terrifying if you think about it. Just some dude in some giant chunky suit of armor stomping around. You know, in my mind, they were slow and cumbersome and pretty pretty easy to take over. And all of a sudden, imagining this dude just dead sprinting at me in full plate? Nah.
some fake full plate. Nice. It's very cool, Em. Doing that with your 3D printers? Oh, nice. I'm so impressed by that. I'm so impressed by anyone who can make physical things. <laughs> Like, I've built a deck, I've repaired a lawnmower, I've replaced a spark plug. That's about the full extent of my physical capabilities with my hands outside of art. I think I may have done a sculpture in college at one point or another, but... Making an actual, like, all cosplayers, like, especially, like, the really impressive ones, good lord... Like vomit inducing how good they are at actually making like props and things. Have I tried ZBrush at all? Um, no, I haven't, and I'll tell you why because it's intimidating. <laughs> it is, I mean. Anytime I've ever looked and watched someone, because the problem is, is that I saw ZBrush not as like some guy that's like, yeah, I'm interested in sculpting. I saw ZBrush in a professional's hands at the highest level. So I was watching it being done by like a pro out the gate and I immediately went, I'm intimidated. I could never do that. So that's reason number one. Reason number two I've got so many other things and skills and things I'm working on. I know my strength is 2D. Oh, so, show. If I tried to stretch that out in a 3D, I wouldn't sleep. There would I would literally be buried in so many things to do that I would not have the time to do something fun like this. Huh. I could always look into it. I saw something um, when I was at ReaperCon a few years ago. Um, one of the artists was uh, doing some work. Um, I, I wish I could give him proper credit. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he was sculpting some weird frog creature thing. And he was working in ZBrush. And it was super freaking cool. No, it wasn't Weeby. Definitely wasn't. Um, but he was showing me that he was doing some interesting things with, um, like, doing black versus white and doing grayscale, but that grayscale also, um, extruded out based on, like, if it was, if it was a black line, it cut in, but if it was a white line, it bumped it out, and based off the, yeah, depth map, there you go. But based on that, and I watched this guy put scales on this thing in seconds by using Photoshop and ZBrush, and I was just like, get out of here. It was wild. I love watching professionals work. Especially when professionals work, not in the like, I'm going to show you how to do this. It's when they just go, and they're going full speed. It's like learning a language in school and then watching a native speaker speak it, and you just go, no. Nope. Took, what, two years of Spanish, and then I went to Costa Rica on a school trip, and uh, yeah, uh, we were not prepared. I need a button for, like, the Illidan quo. You are not prepared! Aw, oh, thanks, Craig. Yeah. Is Maya better for, um... Like, making... Is Maya better for making, like, video game stuff? Because it's all triangles?
Yes and no. All right, concrete answer. Thank you, Em. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sure you'll explain it. If you got the time. If you don't, that's totally cool. I'm totally down with you leaving this as a mystery. Mystery it is. Okay, sounds good. Man. I'm just thinking of like, I remember when digital sculpting came out before 3D printing. And like people were sculpting these unbelievable, beautiful 3D statues. Do they have a way of actually getting those made? Nerbs sounds like an 80s invading alien force. Behold, the Nerbs. Alright. Oh, yay, yeah, starting to take shape. Very selfishly, there's nothing more that I like than. Actually, you know what? I need to do an adjustment here. There's nothing more I love than seeing a piece come together. Well, that's a lie. There may be something I love more, which is my wife. Um, that was that was that was lame. I apologize. It's also true. As long as it's polygons. Ooh. Interesting. Thanks so much. I think that's been one of the coolest things about working in the tabletop gaming industry is watching, you know, you see all these cool sculpts and all these cool painted minis and busts and models come out. But the thing I love to see the most is the actual sculptors come out to these things and show off their work. Like, of course I want to see the thing beautifully painted by a professional, but also I want to see the, like the raw work underneath and the green stuff and all the like sculpting things that go into it. That's so cool to me. It's like looking at an artist's sketchbook. You kind of get into their brain a little bit more. Oh yeah. And I think I've only got one green in existence. I think that's our, um, a mesh comes in. What do you mean by mesh? Yeah, that is true. So when we were working on Shovel Knight, Dungeon Duels, um, all the sculpts are officially done, which is super cool. But the coolest thing was like playing this really awesome video game and then getting the license for it to make a board game and then finding a guy and hiring him to do the sculpts for it and he does an unbelievable amazing job i'm gonna give him a shout out heriberto valley martinez congratulations there's two people watching me on twitch and i just shouted you out what's up <laughs> um no he did amazing work amazing work but it was really cool to see his uh, stuff you weren't the only one who was jealous we got that license in Ha <laughs> ha. 
I, I don't I don't know how we got it to tell you the truth. Um, the guys from uh, Yacht Club Games were amazing to work with. They were so much fun to talk to. They even took us out at PAX and helped us show off the thing. And um, it, it it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. Um, yeah, but I think three or four different people were going for the license for that, and we put a game together, and we said, hey, we think this would be cool, this is something we've made, what do you guys think? He said, yeah, we like it, we have a couple of ideas, you want to, you know, cut down the playtime and do this and that, but we really like the concept, and I was like, okay, cool. And then we discover after the fact, like, four companies tried to get it, two slightly bigger ones that I will not name here, and, uh... Yeah, some, some people weren't happy about it, but, you know, we made a good game. I'm proud of it. And we did good on Kickstarter. I'm proud of that. Round two, not round one. Actually, and while you're here, Dream License. If you could make a board game or a product from anything, what would be your dream property you would want to work with? That's a tough question, isn't it? I think that's all the brown leather. Well, dark brown leather. Now we're gonna go to light brown leather. Oh wait. Yeah. yeah, dream license property, that would be tough. I don't know what I would wanna do. I think it needs to be a little bit darker. I know what's going to happen when I get to the shadow layer. All oh, this line work is going to start blending in, but I can make adjustments. Avatar The Last Airbender miniatures game. That'd be cool. I've always been really curious how you do a good questy oriented um, game. Like, this is my crew, and I'm going to go along this adventure, and it could be one to four players. I mean, not to toot our own horn. We did pretty good with Wanderer, as far as that's concerned. Get out of here. Go. Go, go, go. I love you, Lou. Get out. They're just coming here, hot breathing all up on me. Lily's my dog. Don't just mean some random stranger named Lily who's in my home, hot breathing on me. That's a whole different set of issues. But yeah, a Gundam license would be super freaking cool. How do you see a Gundam game playing out? Would that be just giant mech battles or would there be some kind of story element to it? Ooh, war game. Well, you guys would, <laughs> you would make a solid war game. I could see the Kickstarter for it now. You just open up the box and it said everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked.
Yeah, that's how fingers look, right? Sure. <laughs> Just a massive nation, nation of fire army soldiers and tanks. Don't we all? I could do without the soldiers and the tanks. I just want Uncle Iroh. Just literally have one model in the corner. I just keep rolling dice for him to say smart stuff. Other players try and attack me, but I'm like, sorry, dude. Too charming. Oh, I forgot to color the burb's feet. No. Oh. Hex grid skirmish. Yeah, I can see that working. And if you've got good enough AI rules, you can almost do like battles against um, Char and Xeon, and yeah, that'd be rad. I wonder how many times the guys behind Gundam. Namkai Bando, right? Or no, I said that completely. I butchered that. Uh, but I wonder how many times the guys behind Gundam have been pitched something like that before. Bandai Namco. Did I call it Namdai Bamco? <laughs> ah, yes, the Gundam can company. Namdai Bamco. Just make that company, Em. Just make that company and make your Gundam game. What are they going to do? Sue you for a lot of money, but still. Go for it. See, that's a disappointment. This is my first time. I feel like if you wanted to make a Gundam board game, it would be so easy just to talk to them and be like, hey, you guys know some plastic producers, right? And they're like, uh, yeah. Be like, between that and a rule set and some art assets, we could put together a skirmish game in like a second. Oh, that's cool. Can we talk about the fun stages of early board game testing and what that looks like? Ugly, that's what I mean. It looks ugly. But you had actual Gundam models you were playing with and doing that rule set with. That's pretty rad. I can't make a similar claim. Oh, when we were testing Wander, we were like using anything we could find. Hmm, interesting. Oh look, a giant chip in his leather armor. Does it make sense? No. Everything's okay. Really? Interesting. I've got some audio stuff set up on here. Um and it may be cutting me out every now and then. Let me see if I can't make an adjustment. Hopefully that's better. The idea is I'm trying to like negate any background noise that may be happening, i.e. my dogs wandering around. Huh, weird. Now, this is probably an amateur mistake, but I am doing this via wireless, so <laughs> I probably need to hardline in. Oh no! Damn, I did so much talking. Always hardline, yeah. Lesson learned. Well, the good news is I'm recording this, too, so, you know. Next time I'll hardline in, 
it's always a learning process and I will also make sure luckily with the recording I can load this up to YouTube at some point so there's evidence I did something that's half the reason I'm doing this is because I just got really tired of creating a bunch of digital assets with no evidence that I actually worked on anything or did anything oh thank you I think a nice advantage is I do kind of do art and graphic design for a living. So it made it kind of easy to start doing. Um, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I'm good at graphic design. Uh, I'm good enough. Yeah, that's right. Your computer did blow up. Oh, I felt terrible about that. Like, here's a question. Are you okay? That thing didn't, like, hit you in the process of exploding, did it? Hopefully I didn't cut out and you actually heard what I said. Ah. <laughs> There's a lot of jokes I can make with that M, but I'm trying to keep it clean. <laughs> oh my god. A lot of sound and fury with no substance. I know a lot of people who argue like that. Well, I hope it was a power supply. It'd be awesome to get you up and operational again. Love to tune in for some sweet gunplay action. And that looks good. Yeah, that button's got a divot. Deal with it. taking shockingly less time. Oh, hey, Paul. How's it going, man? Good to hear from you. Paul and I are best friends by Canadian standards, so... Which means, if I remember right, it means we talked for five minutes and got along. Hey, Spencer. Uh, my Twitch is uh, Heathosaurus Art. So... <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll type it in here just in case. Oh, there. Okay. So yeah, it's Heathosaurus art. Yeah, if you guys are on Twitch, it'd be great if you could like subscribe or watch me on there too. Um, I'm kind of trying to build up followers, but at the same time, I'm really just enjoying doing this, getting feedback from friends, and, uh, you know, having a kind of routine working schedule for this stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. What's the YouTube thing? Hey, everyone, it's your boy Heath. Make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to my channel. On Twitch, it's Heathosaurus Art. On Instagram, it's Art of HF, and I've also got a Facebook page, Art of HF, as well. Apparently, there's a donate button I need to get on there. Oh! Good to hear, Paul. Glad it's going well. Ooh, Bulky Skulls now following. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Um. Staying home with the kids and watching the world burn. Dude, the world is burning. I get worried. Yeah, I probably should. I probably should, Em. You're so wise. So wise. 
I do have a ticker down here. I don't know if you can see it or not. Uh, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram. And I should probably put Twitch on there too. I'll work on it. I'm open to all suggestions. I'm brand new at this. I feel like I'm an old guy learning something new. Ooh, Geeks in the North. There's Paul. I know him. What up, buddy? Um, Paul, honestly, I'm doing great. Um, it's a little weird because uh, I live in the county in Georgia with the most cases. Um, but we're being smart. Uh, my wife is a um, health and safety manager at her workplace and she has been doing a great job of kind of educating me on properly wearing masks and washing hands and reminding me of being safe and I'm pretty sure just by being married to her uh, we're gonna get through this just fine but I'm still working she's still working um, we're doing good um, there's no health emergencies or horrible financial things happening, which is a blessing. I know it's different with some of my friends um, who I reached out to and tried to help support and all that kind of stuff. So, but no, it's good. Um, things are weird, but uh, we're making our way through. Um, things are going swimmingly at Pandacult. Um, we're just trying to get Shovel Knight taken care of. Which, you know, what great timing to have a Kickstarter end and try and get into production. Which I'm pretty sure is... Eh, half the tabletop industry. Yay! Cyperion is now hosting my stream. Thanks, Sam. But it's been good, it's been good to hear from my tabletop buddies. Just seeing how they're doing and making sure they're all okay. You know, after Adepticon got cancelled, I think that was an eye-opener for a lot of us to realize, like... Oh boy, I'm probably not going to see these guys until, what, August, maybe? That depends if Gen Con actually, you know, holds up. We'll see. Oh, that's an ugly line. We're going to just thicken that up here. Just make it a happy line. Oh, can I do this? Ah, I'm off. You know, if it does happen... Oh... Yeah, you guys got a pretty sweet, uh, pretty sweet package you got going on for you. What is it, two thousand dollars a month or something like that? Yeah, Gen Con's got a pretty big chance of. Uh, so, um. Origins is happening in October now. Uh, M. So, Origins is in Ohio. So, just keep that in mind. Yeah, let's hope ReaperCon happens. Um, 2K a month. God. I mean, that's great. That's absolutely great for you guys. Um, let me look it up real quick. They just sent out an email saying they rescheduled it. Uh, hold on. Let me do it over here. So people can't see what I'm doing. I'm being sneaky. Origins Game Fair. Um, I'd have to dig through my email to go and find it, but um, I believe it's like around the middle of October. I'll get you more information after this, M. But yeah, it's happening in October. Or that's what they're hoping for, you know. It's it's uh, it's kind of hard to tell. I hope Gen Con go goes on. I hope the Origins reboot happens in October. We'll see. Ooh. Yeah, you want to talk about the cluster that the end of the year is going to get? Oh, neat. It'd be awesome to see you there, Em. Yeah, that, that makes sense. 
That'd be cool to get you back in Japan. I saw some of your photos from there. It looked really cool. October 7th to 11th for Origins. Let's hope, man. If it's all still going on, it is going to be a crazy end of the year. Because for us, it's going to be Gen Con. Uh, well, it's going to probably be Gen Con, then Dragon Con, then Origins, and then PAX Unplugged. Again, giant maybes to all of that. But uh, that's a lot of big shows in a couple of months. And I don't know about you guys. Anyone who's actually run a booth at a show uh, knows pretty freaking well that it is an exhausting prospect. It's a blast to see people playing your game and enjoying themselves and having fun. There's also so much energy. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest, M. I think it's going to be weird for whatever show is the first to happen after all this. I think you're going to have half the people there going, Oh yeah, this is great. We're out. We're doing it. That's fine. Then you're going to have the other half. Oh, sorry. That's um, still kind of dealing with the emotional stuff of being quarantined and scared for months. And I don't know how those guys are going to react. Also, there's going to be a big time question of like, is something going to go down? Yeah, Concrete is bad enough already. There's going to be a big question of like, who... Hmm, what's the best way to phrase this? If everything starts normalizing towards the tail end, you know, what are cons going to look like? If it's close to being normal again, but people still want to attend that show, even though it's unsafe to do so, it's going to be really weird to see how it all breaks down. And Paul, I'm really sorry to hear you got laid off, man. But, you know, at least you were in Canada. If you got laid off here, you'd be screwed. Give me them glove stitches. Also, I'm not going to lie. Drawing this hand with this glove has been a absolute great joy. Hands are hard to draw. And I know for myself, they got easier over time, but that doesn't mean they got easy. Hands are hard in every medium. Well, generally, generally speaking, you know what? I'm going to do a little adjustment here. I want to flatten this out a bit. Because I think what I need to do is something like that. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Hands are hard in any medium. That is the truth, man. I can't imagine sculpting a hand. It's amazing enough that we have hands and they move in fun ways. Oh, cool. So are you kind of like keeping an eye on the kids while she's working? Getting some quality dad time in? That's awesome, man. Getting some more quality time with the kids. It's great. My um, sister-in-law is a teacher. And <laughs> I had a... Like, she she loves teaching. Um, she's in a different position now. I, I wish I could remember off the top of my head exactly what she does. But she's moved up in it. And uh, 
she was explaining to me the unique challenges of being a parent and uh, teaching kids while having kids that you're also taking care of and, you know, waiting for the school year to be over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's been fun. You know, snow. I, I have a uh, family out in Utah, and they said they had snow and earthquakes in the same week as all the corona stuff was kicking into high gear. <laughs> Winter, the rewintering, round two. I make jokes about Georgia winter that we have like four different rounds of it. We have main winter, which is kind of mild. And then we have like three cold snaps. And uh, it actually kind of cooled down here recently too, which is probably the same storm that brought your stuff. But uh, yeah, a little bit different up where you're from. All right, let me see. What do I want to do? What do I want to work on next? You know what? I think it's I think it's coat time. Ooh, that's dark. Yeah, I can't imagine the <laughs> frustration with living in a super snowy region. It's probably cool some days. No pun intended, I swear to God. Um but then all of a sudden, like, you pack up those winter clothes. And I'm sure you're excited to pack up the winter clothes because you're like, I don't have to wear a thousand layers. And then suddenly, bam, snow again. Pretty sure one of my dogs is snoring super loud in the other room, which is the exact reason that I put on a sound dampener. <laughs> I love her, but she is a loud girl when it comes to snoring. All right. Thanks for dropping in, Paul. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Like we just had a phone call. This is nice, being able to draw, having friends pop in. Hmm. Oh yeah, there's all this stuff. So something funny has been happening with my thought processes towards art recently, which is I've been almost reluctant to do more heavy line work like this, only because I did a couple of pieces for a project that sadly got canceled. Um, but it was a full digital painting project, like not line work and stuff like this. It was straight up just digitally painted like D&D &D level characters. And I loved working that job, but it made me realize line work stylistically looks great if you're going for a certain visual i.e cartoony stylings but you know the more serious and the more digital painting you're going with things um it actually holds you back is that all the cloak really nice all right line work is going super well um i'm gonna start working on pirate pants because this is gonna be a nightmare i'm gonna do color hold line work on interchanging color bits you'll be fine everything's fine oh i'm gonna put the color picker over here so you guys can get an idea of what i'm doing basically i take the color i go into color picker and then i just like absolutely dive bomb this is why i'm a pro because i choose really stupid difficult things to do for myself I'm just kidding. This pirate thing's gonna look really cool once I'm done with it. Being a pro, I feel like being a pro artist, I feel like is less about. Oh, that's too thick. 
I feel like it's less about, like, if you're good and you're talented at what you're doing, like, that's that says something huge about your capabilities as an artist. But I feel like the real test is if you can meet a deadline and you can do it positively, even if you feel like absolute garbage. Which, let me tell you, that is incre incredibly hard. You're feeling sick, you're feeling tired, you're feeling uninspired, you still work through it. It's a remarkable skill to have. Like, doing art direction for Bandicoot Games has been great just because, like, I've almost learned from some of the artists we've been working with. It's like, I can get fussy. I absolutely can get fussy. Just ask Jonathan, he knows. Um, Jonathan's my business partner in Bandicoot Games. A very patient guy with me, which I appreciate. Um, but, yeah, working with a calm, cool, relaxed artist that you ask for a major change and they're just like, cool, done. It's just like, you're a miracle and I love you. Dealing with an artist with an ego. Ugh. Some of it deserve it though, like freaking Frank Verzetta. I heard he was kind of a monster to deal with some days. But I mean, the guy's an absolute freaking legend, so it's kind of hard to go like, well, Frank Frazetta got fussy with me, but he is Frank freaking Frazetta. If any of you don't know who Frank Frazetta is, look him up. He is my hero, artistically. Kind of uh, questionable in his personal life, but um, from a creative standpoint, the guy's rock solid and amazing. Actually, was at um, Dragon Con one year, and his daughters were there, and they were talking about it was like a panel discussion about Frank Frazetta. I'm like, oh my god, like I absolutely have to go to this. And in the process of watching it, it wasn't about the man's art. It wasn't about his unbelievable... Yeah, I think I need a little more line work here. It was about his unbelievable talent. Um, it was all about some ugly legacy of them. Um, about his artwork and who owned it. And legal battles ensuing and all this other stuff and I was just sitting there going like this is just not how I want to remember this guy's legacy <laughs> I love this music list I have no idea what's coming next and then you get something with that like super 70s sounding feel it's nice Adjustment here. Okay. I swear, they're playing a guitar in this thing, and I love it. Let's talk about the brilliant mind behind the guitar. There was a novel invention. Hey, what if we took a keyboard and made someone hold it like a guitar? that seem unwieldy? Yeah. Do you think anyone's going to look cool holding this? No. Awesome. I need a couple thousand. Alright, well I think his piratey pants are done. Which I'm sure a pirate would love hearing me say it that way. Pirate pants. By the way, so I hope you guys know, I don't always plan on drawing specific wander-related things. I actually have been playing around with a bunch of different ideas. Like this adorable dude. I had this idea for a comic, like a little mini short comic. Hold on, I'll keep this open while I'm talking about it. I had this idea for this uh, short comic. Where it's like a slice of life thing, but then something really weird happens. I have a lot of dreams like that. Like, I'm going to the store. Suddenly a giant squid walks out with a top hat and a mustache and goes, Good day. 
and then keeps walking. Besides that, everything's normal. And I had this idea for a comic where, like, this character's walking through, and then all of a sudden, like, he finds this thing that he touches, and it shows him a whole different world. And all of a sudden, he's got to, like, deal with all this craziness, like, Cthulhu-level um, Lovecraftian horrors coming at him. And he's just out for a grocery run, and then he gets back, and he's got this, like, weapon, and he's covered in, like, goo and blood and all this other stuff. And his wife asks him, like, hey, how was your day? And he was like, hey, what's okay? So I started designing some characters just to, like, see if I wanted to keep chasing after that project, but we'll see. I have just enough free time right now to start chasing down some different ideas, and it's been really cool. But, you know, at the same time, I do have a lot of wander designs I need to get to coloring here soon. So those are definitely in the works. So if there's any wander fans that go back and watch through these videos, don't worry. I've got those guys in, in mind for sure. I've got all the sketches and stuff down for the next batch of heroes and villains for Le Clux Revenge, at least the base game stuff. Just need to apply some color to them. Which, as you can tell, seeing as I sketched the character in one night, it's taking me probably three days of three-hour sessions to get the rest of this done. They take a little while. If I had the time to just do this for eight hours a day, trust me, I could probably bang out a character a day, but... Unfortunately, real life gets in the way, like eating and sleeping in other jobs. You know what's cool? Shoulder satchels. Oh, you're excited. Good to hear. I'm excited too. I actually threw some base colors on the cluck. Uh, because M, you did me that favor of that big print, wink, wink. And um, Liz automatically started asking me, like, about color schemes and things like that that I could produce. So I've already put together a color scheme for them and I think Liz is gonna try and paint that thing up at some point or another. But no pressure on her for it, obviously. She's got plenty she's dealing with. Someone's a big painter for Kingdom Death. And she's a showmaster, can't forget that. <laughs> Nothing like those Simpsons terms. Well, we'll talk about embiggening things. That sounds wrong. <laughs> um, we'll talk about it more. If I ever get a digital sculpt of the bear shark, trust me, having a big version of him would be really freaking cool. Got to play Wonder on three by three by three foot squares at Gamma Trade Show in the future. Sure, that won't cost an arm and a leg. <laughs> Jonathan and I are just sweating from lifting up these giant models. Well, actually, technically at that stage, it would probably be uh, hollow on the inside, right? Because, like, just pouring that much plastic and resin into, like, a single piece would be ridiculous. Like, I'm imagining the inside framework of that thing is just, like, a mesh of crossed lines to keep the structure. But then the outside is, like, nice and tight. Yeah. Oh, neat. I will tell Liz and Jonathan that. You know what's weird? I still haven't seen that sculpt in person yet. 
I think like you sent it and I went up there recently and I can't remember why I didn't see it, but then, you know, everything happened. Everything happened. It all started when that gorilla got shot in that zoo. Miss my boy Harambe. Alright. God, I'm closing in. Nice, it's only 2 o'clock. This is rad. This is a lot of really good progress for two hours of work. Well, no, not two hours of work. One hour of work. Pardon me, taking a little micro Arnold Bomber break. I also made sure to eat a proper lunch this time, or breakfast, whatever it was. Um, <laughs> one fourth scale. You'd have to reinforce that sucker. Is she still in a similar pose where she's bouncing on a leg? I saw you post about it, and I saw the little chibi version. That's gotta be dangerous having your own 3D printer. I just want to make giant versions of things all the time. If literally the only cost is time and materials. Yeah. You may have to like almost figure out a way to reinforce a hole to put like a steel rod into the ground to balance her off of if you do like one quarter size. Let me see. Where do I want to go from here? You know what? There's a little bit of this stuff that I haven't gotten to. I'll finish that up. But it's cool. Um, are you planning on like resurrecting EFT or is it just you really like the sculpts and you want to start producing those again? Because from what I've seen it looks like you're doing kind of like a digital release of it. Like releasing tiles digitally and releasing the sculpts. And if I'm, like, ruining anything by talking about it, please let me know. I can absolutely shut up. Pretty sure my EFT design folder is actually I don't need to know I could I could probably physically weigh all the physical designs I did for EFT and you just described all business yeah <laughs> as long as you can keep selling something you should keep selling something Well, I genuinely hope they do. Really. If anything, you do have an offer to do large-scale 3D printing, which is pretty freaking rad. satisfying. I don't know why. I love... Oh. That's fair. I get it. I freaking love the finishing quality of working on this kind of stuff. Like, there's something so soothing about putting down, like, nice, clean line work and making something look finished and complete.
Oh yeah, 15 inches tall, go for it. Listen, if I had a giant 3D printer right now, I'd totally freaking go for it. And I thought about getting one until uh, my lovely safety wife um, told me very, very succinctly, uh, we probably shouldn't do that. And you know, I can't, I can't blame her. You know, we'd have to, we don't have a lot of space. We don't have a proper vent hood. We don't really have a zone we can do this in that's temperature controlled. Like every room in this house is being used in some way or some form, so. But it'd be neat though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's actually a really cool thing to know is like when we went to PAX uh, East? Was it PAX East? No, it was PAX West. We went to PAX West to promote Shovel Knight and I was talking to all these board game people. We were at a couple of little schmoozy drinking events and uh, honestly, we had no right to be at any of them, but there we were. Thanks, Yacht Club. Um, one of the things that blew my mind is that all these video game people have amazing assets at their hands and they generate a lot more money than we do in the board game industry. And when I started talking to them about costs and building like 3d versions of things i got like gawked at because i have this weird understanding of how physical stuff being made works it was so strange to me because in my mind video games are just like like you know you sell two million copies and it costs 25 bucks a pop outside of the man time creating the physical thing and like maintaining the servers and stuff like it's got to be so cost efficient. But the second I was like, yeah, making a 3D model, getting the cuts done in the right way, they were all just like, what, what, what? It was kind of cool. Then, of course, I'm explaining this thing to them that they're being so impressed by at a giant, like, ritzy party that they themselves are hosting. And I'm just like... Yeah, I know all this cool stuff. Hey, how about all that money you have? Actually, Yacht Club's doing a lot of really cool stuff. Hmm. By the way, Zim, I saw that you were playing uh, the Final Fantasy remake. Did you enjoy it? I've been playing it through too, I'm just curious. Because you, I think you said you hadn't played it before, and I thought that was really interesting. Oh, you beat it, nice. I'm really close. I'm about to get into the Shinra building as we speak. Not as we speak, that's dumb. I'm working as we speak. Final, God. Final Fantasy VII was instrumental in my young nerdy life. Like, absolutely freaking instrumental in my young nerdy life. And it blows my mind. Like, I would have assumed you would have played that game, but that's totally cool. You haven't, too. You get to enjoy a lot of weird stuff in that game in a very beautiful freaking setting. All I'm going to say is the Don Corneo slash Honeybee Inn scenes were great. They made me laugh. I don't want to ruin anything for anyone. But it's hilarious and you should be really excited about when you get to that part. I like how they went all in on it too. Like, hey, you know the scene where Cloud dresses up like a girl? Yeah. Let's just take that and add a dance routine to it. Sure, why not?
<laughs> yeah. I'll be honest, the remake is screwing with me because I can't remember exactly how everything went down. So part of me is like, wait, is this is this how this went down? By the way, I've got some actual physical art stuff coming in on Friday. Well, today's Thursday, right? Yeah. I've got some actual physical art stuff coming in, like acrylic, brushes, paint, um, canvas, the works. I'm actually really intimidated about working in that medium again because I haven't done it since basically art school. And even then, I barely did it in art school. So I'm really interesting. So I'm really interested, sorry, in uh, what that process is gonna look like. I've got a series of four illustrations I wanna do. That's like part of a set. The idea being it's like all young characters kind of think like little kids in Zootopia, kind of on the streets or out in a field and they're kind of running around and you know, one standing on a log, one standing in the grass. and. Basically, each panel is going to be one 10 by 20 panel with a kid hitting a pose. Like, I remember as a little kid, I ran around my backyard with like a stick. And um, that was a sword, or it was a spear, or it was a gun, or it was, it was something, right? And I remember loving it to death, using my imagination for it. And I think, I don't think it's lost. I don't think kids don't use their imaginations anymore, but I think... It's a little bit different than how I used to do it. I think they have so much media that they have access to that they could either like a lot of the stuff like a lot of my creativity when I was a kid was based out of boredom. Like I didn't have enough things to do. So, you know, I played with Lego and used my imagination to like build worlds with them and stuff. And, you know, kids can still do that for sure. I'm not going to play that against them whatsoever, but um No, I think it'd be really interesting to like almost do an illustration showing what an aspect of my childhood was. We'll see. Oh man, one of my dogs is getting, getting all turnt in the backyard. That's right, you bark in that one corner for no reason. How dare that corner offend you? You came into my house? All right. You know what? I'm going to start pulling. There we go. So, fun fact, a lot of these colors are solid shapes and are very easy to do line work on. And then I get into this gobbled mess. And now i got to figure all this out. So, I'm going to have a fun time doing that. Part of being an artist is making horrible decisions for yourself than figuring out your way out of them. Which sounds like a lot like my dating life before I met my wife. Are these jokes good? No, but I'm not doing a stream about jokes, am I? up a little bit. Noise.
Oh yeah, the tail. That's right, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm really curious about how I could use this stream in the future. Do I want to just draw stuff and have people watch me do it? Which is fine. I'm totally on board with that. Do I want to try and be educational to a degree? Do I want to teach people aspects of drawing? Do I want to just not worry about any of that and just draw cool stuff? The stream is my oyster. Oh, my dog's boofing out there. Again, at a corner for no reason. I don't know why. I think she saw a burb. A mix of all of that. Good idea. Let's see why not. And if I'm also saving all these videos and putting them on YouTube, it's like I'll have an educational thing in no time. So I don't know why a lot of this other work, line work, is. Eh. I'm not gonna say limited, but it's um, it's definitely just kind of slight, thick to thin. I don't know why, but on the musculature or the actual form of it, I like to add a little bit more variation to the thick and thinness. I don't know why. There's something about the liveliness of it that's actually captured in something physical versus something you know. Cloth can have a life of its own. I'm never going to argue that. But um, I think the actual physical nature of muscle structure, things like that, I think it lends itself to a little bit more of a lively line to it. I think it just makes it more interesting. Let's make a new layer. Right. Oh, that was my angle. Okay. All right, let's do a little bit here. Get some of this stuff. Yeah. Drawing is a lot like driving a car. What I mean is, when you're driving a car, you're making dozens, if not thousands, of little micro decisions. You're making, you're adjusting the wheel, you're keeping, paying attention to all the things happening around you, all that stuff. The drawing, it's pretty similar in the sense that I have to kind of make a thousand little micro decisions as I'm going every single step of the way. I like it. Sometimes it can be exhausting, especially like right now. This is like my bread and butter. I'm happy, happy, happy doing this. Um, but there's sometimes where it doesn't go that well. 
where you get frustrated and you can't really figure out, those days are exhausting as an artist. I've been drawing characters professionally for about uh, a decade. And, uh, yeah, still to this day, like this piece, this other one I was working on, like I was trying to figure out like, you know, here's our main guy and this one would be his wife or girlfriend or significant other, you know, um, for that mini comic idea. And I got absolutely stuck on her and could not figure it out. So I just freaking walked away and played Final Fantasy VII yesterday. Seems like a good use of my time. Alright, let's... Oh. You know what, that looks a little weird. I'm going to... make that a solid... That look right. Eh, it'll work. Yay. I know what I can call the artistic lesson ones how to draw like heath. A simple guide to drawing like an idiot. Step one, take all your rational thoughts, throw them away. We don't need them. Oh yeah, it's ear fluff time. Not a sentence I expect to say on a daily basis, but I'll welcome it. I see I did a lot of pre-planning here. That's cool. Well, I guess I'll just make this up then. Sometimes that happens. When I was working on Wanda the Cult of Barnacle Bay, the cover for it, I realized in the middle of the cover that uh, <laughs> I had a church with no stained glass windows. And I drew very specific spots to put in stained glass windows. So I had to like panic and then create that out of nothing, basically overnight. That was a fun day. And then, fun fact, I actually was so focused on that little detail, I forgot to add an entire character for the longest time. And you can actually see it at conventions. Finn from the game isn't even on the freaking banner. <laughs> oh, and everyone's coins or medallions for the Wanderers Guild. Yeah, none of those are rendered. The fun facts you learn. Oh, I'm closing in. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about the feet. The little toesies. By the way, is when I got a chance to see the Red Panda in person, let me tell you, cutest little paws on the planet. I'm generally a supporter of don't touch wild animals, but I mean, when I got to feed a red panda and pet it a little bit, my god.
I also feel like I'm solving a crime in the 70s right now with this music, and I'm digging it. I need to go, like, go kick in a door in Detroit and Bell Bottoms. about ways I can improve the stream which I'm sure people have plenty of suggestions step one don't be terrible So close. Just gotta work on some face details and the burb and the sword, and we'll be good to go. Oh, yeah, buckles. Buckles are a thing. Tell you what, you know what? The eyes are inset in, so we're gonna need. are always fun to work on these kind of things because it's like how do I make him look happy and content while staring at this burb it's not always the easiest thing to do I should work really hard on emotional reactions for characters in a lot of these pieces because each character you're drawing has a personality they've got a spirit of themselves I mean you know I could just draw a guy in armor and say like look at this cool dude there's nothing wrong with that but um i like giving him a little bit more character like i was talking about earlier i can't believe how many times i can refer back to this but that web or not web comic that's uh, incorrect that mini comic idea i had you know i spent a lot of the day yesterday just working on little expressions him being a little too sure of himself, you know, him being scared of something, being a little curious, terrified, lazy, things like that. It's fun to work on overall. I gotta thank comic books for that. You have to be able to draw that stuff in comics. Everyone can't be angry all the time. 
That is the essence of tabletop games, though, unfortunately. Everyone's angry all the time. Oh, thanks, Russ. Everyone's angry all the time in tabletop games. Everyone's going to get tetanus. Because everything's rusty. You're going to get murdered by a demon. How's your day going, Russ? There needs to be just a little bit of a hint of a hint. All right. All right. We're starting to take shape. I'm almost to a stage where I can take off the rough art, which would be pretty cool. It will be red, my dudes. yard work chilling wowing I get it sounds like a good time <laughs> some more yard work are you building more things are you constructing stuff are you working with a hatchet that's really my main question I hear they're dangerous tools, especially when they're freshly sharpened. Yeah, we finished mulching our front yard, and it looks delightful. The strange things you get excited about in your 30s, man, I'm telling you. Oh, that was Lily again. Hey, Liddy. Just coming here, flapping your ears, making a bunch of noise. Cool. I was actually, when I was at SCAD recently for the Comic Book Arts Forum, which was a super cool thing to go to, um, one of the questions we were asked on the panel discussion was, what is something you do outside of working on comics? Because a problem they were running into is like, their kids were doing nothing but either working on comics or playing video games, which is not a terrible thing. But, you know, you gotta, you gotta do some things outside of that. So it was like, you know, what do you guys do to have, like, hobbies outside of this kind of stuff? And one of my questions was, or one of my comments was, it's gonna sound weird, I do yard work. And, you know, I, I, I realized it was immediately met with, like, huh? Um, but the truth is, is, like, with art and projects, the older you get and the bigger the projects get. <sighs> yeah, it's keeping me sane, too. 
Um, the older you get, the bigger some of these creative projects get. Um, you don't typically see an end result immediately. It takes a while to get to it. So you know what doesn't take a long time to get an, a result in? Yard work or maintenance. Like my wife and I replaced a toilet. Like it was freaking awesome because automatically we have like a new big toilet and it's magical. And on top of that, it's like we did it ourselves and it didn't take a ton of effort to do so. And then in like the span of less than an hour, I have something that I've done that's satisfying. Like you can't beat that. I'm pretty sure you can't beat that. All right, let me see. I keep jumping around. Sorry, guys. I should try and focus on one zone at a time. But yeah, I totally get it keeping you sane, bud. 100%. We've actually got some guys coming out to do installation work soon, and I'm excited. Oh, yeah, Iris. Yeah, I'll work on that again. But we got some guys coming out to do some uh, insulation work soon. And I know I don't have a camera up because I don't think people want to see me hunched over staring at a camera from an inch away. But um, my office is full of all the stuff you were keeping in the attic, like all the Christmas supplies and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I cannot wait to get them out of here. You know what? I'm actually going to leave the irises for the color stage. Or not the color stage, the um, final rendering stage. I think I can do a lot of good with that. But the face looks done, for the most part. I threw in some other lines and stuff here, but I think it's unnecessary. Yeah. I can just do that with rendering. This is going to go so dark, it's going to look black. That's fine. You know other ways to stay sane? Watching a sweet, sweet stream. Which I got two viewers right now, both of them on Twitch. Both of them are people I know, which you guys are great. But if anyone goes back into YouTube and checks this out again, please feel free to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, at Art of HF. Or follow me on Facebook. I have a page on there called The Art of Heath Foley. Again, Art of HF. And I am on Twitch as Heathosaurus Rex, it's H-E-A-T-H-A-S-A-U-R-U-S, -A -A Rex. I would appreciate you followed or would subscribe, because it would be really cool to do this for a bigger audience. But short term, I don't mind doing it for my friends either. I planned on drawing. Anyways, so why not get people involved? It's basically like an egotistical chat room that I'm running. Do you guys like my art? Good, I can't hear you because I'm the only one talking. Yay, I'm the best. Yeah, you want to talk about things that are keeping you sane. This is that for me. It's cathartic. I can get some work done. I feel like I'm actually producing stuff, which I am. Oof. I think I jacked this whole thing up royally. I'll figure it out. I drew a bunch of shapes, none of it made any sense. People don't look at pommels, right? It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Honestly, the the thing is is that at this scale, it's 
barely going to be recognized. So I'm saying it now. I witnessed my screw up. I know I'm making it. I'm just rolling with it. This isn't for any kind of professional project. It's purely for me. So I'm not entirely worried if it's not perfect. As most people out there should not worry about keeping things perfect. Sometimes you're going to do some things that look messed up, and that's okay. Actually, that's what the whole Art Nouveau movement was. It was people screwing up all the time. I'm just kidding, it wasn't. The Art Nouveau movement was more about people fighting against industrialization with art. Everything could be made by a machine with straight lines, and there's a beauty in that in itself, but it was all straight lines all the time. And people didn't like that, and they were like, you know what? We're going to have an army of craftsmen make things with curves that machines can't. And damn it if it wasn't a beautiful time because of it. Also playing a lot of Final Fantasy recently. I was like, you know what swords need? Bolts. You know what really enhances a sword's strength? When it's screwed and bolted into a thing. I'm also just going to use the same black for the... Blood Groove. <laughs> I remember the penultimate weapon, for sure. Where I actually wrote the word runes in runes on the edge of the blade. And it had a wing and the handle was a brush and it was the most JRPG thing I could think of. Which you know what's funny is that at some point or another, a JRPG I know, art history and art lesson in one stream. I, I'm, I'm hitting all bases here, Russ. They don't even know. I'm educational. Like Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang is for the children. Protect a neck. But yeah, I remember the penultimate weapon. The funny thing is, is that at some point or another, some video game or something is probably... And probably already did it before I even drew that penultimate weapon. Some JP RPG out there that's got some ridiculous looking thing. And they're just like, this is the ultimate weapon in our game. And it's like, cool. Actually, that's something I'm really excited about for the Final Fantasy VII Remake is seeing super high definition versions of all the like iconic weapons I remember. I forgot about the baseball bat. That was hilarious. Just a bat with nails in it. Is it good? Not really. Is its ability good? Kinda. I'd like to think that Square Enix back in the day when they were spending, you know, a million dollars on this title were sitting there going like, Hey, what kind of awesome weapon should we give this character? One guy was like, a bat. They're just like, really? Just a giant bat with nails in it. Sure. Oh, the dogs are just doing zoomies outside. That's so cute. I forgot about the sash too. Man. To be fair, it has been a long time since I've done a character from beginning to end. Legitimately, I mean, when the unfortunate thing of running a board game company, co running a board game company, is um, it kind of takes up a lot of your time and you lose a lot of time to do artwork. You know, I'm not saying that in a woe is me kind of way, it's just a truth of the situation. 
you know, there's arguments to be made, well, you know, you play video games at night? It's like, yeah, well, I kind of need that to calm down. can't just constantly robot out and create things. That's how you burn out. Art is going to take breaks too. Even though we don't want to and our dumb bodies stop us from doing it. it. Actually happened on the last stream I did. I got to about 345, which was unfortunate because the uh, Facebook side of it broke down, which I think was just a connection issue. And, um, yeah, I realized I didn't eat lunch that day and, uh, started getting dizzy. Did better today though. Big bowl of cereal. Ate a lot of fruit. I'm strong. I also don't know why I love these big geometric but buckles like this. I've been drawing them on characters for a while now. They probably don't work or make any sense. I'm sure if I talked to Patrick Keith, he would chastise me for drawing a bad belt buckle. That is one of his favorite things to do. Also, sorry for anyone who just got blinded by me making the background non-transparent. Or making the background transparent, sorry. Let me not blind you again. There we go. Wait, what's this? Is this a buckle that doesn't have that same shape? Ah, the inconsistency, sir. How dare I? But dare I must. For we need to make change. Might be asking yourself, what the hell is he even talking about anymore? The answer is, I don't know. I don't know anymore, man. My wife's gonna come home from work and she's essential. But she's gonna come home from work and being like, you're way less chatty than normal. It's because I got it all out of my system now. All right, got sash and burb and blade handle. Sash, burb, and blade handle. So close. Hundred and twenty hours of print time? Are you freaking kidding me? Well, there goes your week. But, you know, if you don't have any other projects going on, hell yeah. Just print that sucker. Do it in your sleep, it's fine. It's only putting off slightly caustic, melting plastic fumes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, my favorite thing about talking about getting a 3D printer. Oh, cancerous resin fumes, that's good. The favorite thing about talking to my wife about getting a 3D printer was the automatic knowledge that it's putting out nasty stuff. Ooh, 100 messages in chat, thank you. Um, that it's putting out such nasty fumes and stuff and there's just been little scientific research on what that actually is doing to people so immediately is like well if we get this we're gonna have to do a vent hood and all this other stuff and i love my wife because it was like this thing puts out nasty stuff but if it's really something you want to do we'll look into it and i was just like you're awesome but also i don't want to kill my wife we literally just got married in february i'm kind of a fan of hers taking out your wife literally within the first year of marriage be a dumb mistake would be a little tragic that was my dog 
doing loud pants because she thinks being inside is home base. Get out of here. Get out of here, you heavy breather. Go. You're adorable. Go. Come on. There we go. You know what all fantasy adventurers love? Sashes. Fun, decorative purple sashes. I mean, who doesn't really? <laughs> you know what's fun too? I'll be able to put this out. Oh yeah, you do have a tent with uh, for a tent for fume control. I saw that, M, when you took a picture of it. That's smart. Good job. Wife approved. I will be right back. I gotta check in on something real quick, but um, I'll only be gone for about five, five or six minutes. BRB. I do gotta fix the burbs' feet, but I'll get there. funny is that I walked out because I was like there's a lot of noise happening in my house and I was wondering why it turns out the dogs are playing in the yard and Lily likes to use the house or the deck as home base so she gets super excited and super worked up but she's a sprinter not a runner and uh, she thinks the home she thinks the house is like safe from our other dog so she'll just like beeline in here and what she was doing was running into the kitchen and she was like power stopping and turning on the tile in there and I just heard these like loud stone like scraping noises and I was like that's probably not good but it was good it was cute that tile's industrial too so it's gonna survive it's fine Time to fix the burbs feet. You know how I'm gonna do this? It's all gonna be colored line art. Boom, done. <laughs> yeah, that actually worked. little feet. Sometimes we make happy little accidents. We got happy little feet. Oh man. It'd be really cute 
to have a gif of a parrot that's just doing like the little happy I don't know if you guys have ever seen that gif I know gif straight up people just would unsubscribe for me from saying that uh, but I've seen uh, gifs as you animals call it uh, where it's just the bird like picking up his feet and doing like little tippy taps with it it's so freaking cute I could absolutely draw and do a stupid gif of something like that. And I probably will, knowing myself. Because the two or three I've already made are really freaking cute, and I want to make more. That's my new enterprise, custom gifs. Custom, terribly animated gifs. Jeff? Oh, you know, he's friends with George. George's giraffe. <laughs> More in betweens. More in between GIFs. frames you know him that sounds like a lot of work and I don't want to do that I'm hurting my animation friends oh my god I don't have that many that remain him that's the truth I'm still friends with people who went to school for animation. I just don't know how many of them are actually doing it. I know people who were going to school for animation when they announced that 2D animation at Disney was dead. And they were taking 2D animation courses, which I'm pretty sure was a smart move. <laughs> Listen, I have a degree in comic book art. It kind of paid off, but only because I chased it down with the aggression that it deserved. And you'll also notice I'm not doing comics either, so there's that. We all take funny paths to get to where we're going to end up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure anyone who's ever worked in any kind of storytelling, visual arts, anything like that, looks at films and immediately goes like, oh, that's not real. Oh, that's fake. Oh, that's terrible. I'll tell you honestly, when I was doing the background work in Ant-Man, which if any of you haven't met me and listen in on this. I did background work on Ant-Man. Um, it was cool. I'm technically part of the Marvel Universe. No big deal. Um, I now, when I watch movies or TV shows, I just look at the extras in the background and I'm just like, this is terrible for all of them. <laughs> like, their lives are miserable. They have to cake on all this makeup and they're working 16 hours every day on set and they're being paid grilled cheese sandwiches and sadness. My favorite part was talking to this one guy who was literally, oh God, we were on set and this fool of a man who was very, very pretty, and I'll give him that credit, um, was offered a modeling job. 
I'm not kidding. He had an agent who offered him a modeling job and he said, no, I'm about to be in a Marvel movie and I think my career is going to take off. And I just saw Zoolander memes in my head for like days. He was so dumb. And my favorite, my favorite part of that guy, which don't get me wrong, I'm not enjoying the fact that he's an idiot. Well, I kind of am, but um, it was the fact that he, he, he was so pretty that most of the younger women on set were all about him, right? I don't blame him. He's a pretty dude. Go for it. My favorite part is when there was like three or four younger 20-something girls that were on set that were fawning over this guy and one by one they slowly came over because we had a little group set up where we were like playing cards against humanity and talking and hanging out it was fun but they would come over to us one by one every other day or so and they would go like i i just can't do it i just can't and i remember going like what can't you do and they're just like he's so dumb it takes away all of the prettiness from him and i was just like you have learned a very important lesson. Just because someone's pretty doesn't mean they actually have a lot of brilliant thoughts rattling around in there. But, that being said, there's also a lot of pretty people who are really smart. <laughs> there's also a lot of dumb people who are very pretty. There's also a lot of dumb people there, or a lot of unpretty people who are very smart. That's a fun world we live in. Let me see here, I think. Yeah, there we go. Oh. I believe, unless I'm mistaken, all the line art is done, which is pretty cool. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty rock solid. You know, there's some areas where I could do little bits here and there, but, you know, I'm not going to break it. Like, I could do separations and all the fur and whatnot, but I kind of like it as it is. I kind of like the outline being heavy line art and then the rest of it just being kind of internal stuff. So it's looking good. I'm pretty proud of this so far. So, what is... Oh, thank you, Em. What is the next step in this is going to be Shadows. And I don't think I can do all of them in an hour, but I can freaking try. Shadows are interesting in the fact that you're going to start applying shadows to a design and it's not going to look right at the gate. It's going to seem kind of strange, but as with a lot of art, there's a lot of ugly stages you got to go through to get to the final pretty stage. I like trying to have as many pretty stages as I can. Like, I think there's a beauty in doing the sketch. You know, I think I can actually walk you guys through this. Boo, 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 boo. I think there's a beauty in getting to the rough and figuring out your character's overall design. Like, I've always really loved how roughs can look. Like, there's a certain soul and quality into it. Now, from there, you know, I also really appreciate what flats can look like. Because, you know, you can start seeing this character take form and color, and that's really neat. And then, once you start working in the line art, then it starts bringing the whole thing to life in a whole different way. The neat thing about shadows is it's going to start making this character rounded. It's not just going to be a 2D thing. There's a certain roundness to it to begin with. By roundness, I mean like a 3D aspect, right? Um, oh, yeah, I forgot. Boop, eye highlights. There's a certain 3D aspect, a certain roundness, a certain realism that kind of brings the character into a 3D format, which is really neat. Um, that, all, that all starts in the shadow phase. Sorry, I've got all my layers and stuff hidden over here on the right side. Shadows. Like, I'll scooch it over a bit so you guys can see. The what? There we go. Um, 
I can actually just drag it out here. So over here, I've got all my layers set up in a certain way. I've got a gray background, which I always like working against. So I've got a white background just to kind of see how the colors splash against each other. White's kind of aggressive and it makes my eyes hurt. Um, so that's kind of where I leave it as gray. But um, I start labeling all my things. Like I have a folder that's just all the rough layers. I like saving those because you never know, but I'll drop those at the bottom for now. Um, this, let's call this I highlight. And we got our flat color layer, our, our colored line art layer, our eye highlight, which is nice. Now we're going to work on shadows. So I like putting the shadows in between the colored line art and the flats because basically, you know, I want to work underneath this stuff, all the colored line art, because the shadows can kind of fall within that. But I'm going to do a little trick for myself. So right now I'm selecting around all of my colored line art and I'm going to make a mask with this. So I'm going to select the opposite now and I'm going to go to shadows. I'm going to make a mask layer. So what that means is that now I can play within this design. Like, let's say I'm going to use, let's do something obnoxious so you guys can see. I'm going to start playing around with my colors and my shadows. And now I don't have to worry about selecting anything out because it's all been masked. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? We're just going to pull this smooth. Oh, God, it physically hurts. It's so fuchsia. Oh, you know what I forgot about? Oh my god, I totally forgot that he has a nose. <laughs> That's fine. I'm gonna go back to a Conti brush. And this won't take long, but it's still kind of a necessary thing. He has a nose. It deserves as much rendering as anything else. Okay, so. Did I do that? <laughs> I did that on the shadow layer. That's fine. Not the end of the world. I'm just going to get rid of that, put it on the colored line art layer, move it back down to position. Look at that. Oh, all right. Got away from us. There we go. I'm going to put that back in colored line art, and now we're going to work on our shadow layer. Now, what I'd like to do, I'm going to move layers back over here so it doesn't distract you guys. Um, what I'd like to do with layers and shadows here specifically is I like to kind of select out zones specifically. So like right there, I've got all the red selected, which I'm not sure why there's some between certain spots, but that's fine. I can fix that pretty easily. So I'm gonna select zones at a time to kind of work within. So right now I've got his coat and all that stuff and the handle up here. What I like to do is I like to select out a layer um, like right now I'm going to be working on this coat and I like to just get darker and a little bit more saturated and this is just a first pass like I'm going to probably add rim lighting and a couple other more colors and reflective lighting and stuff like I really want to try and flex on this thing and see how well I can do it and I always like starting with a big soft brush by that I mean it's got soft around all the edges and whatnot um, actually tell you what I'll go out here Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm working in this layer right now. Pacifically. Incredibly correct, Russ. Let's see out on this. Um, so basically, I'm using a big soft brush first. And right now, you can see the dotted line around the edges. I'm going to make that go away with Control-H because it bothers me. And um, whenever you're applying colors, this is way unique to anything else I've done so far. You're going to want to try and apply them based off a of direction. Typically, I like to think of my light coming from kind of a, this angle and hitting the characters. So you're gonna get a lot of more harsh lighting. Like, as an example, this right here, this collar is kind of gonna be going down and, to, and it's also at a slightly down angle. So I'm gonna apply some shadows to it. Hey, Mark. Um, also, I completely forgot. Um, with this, I like to take the flow down to 50%, um, just because it kind of helps with, um, like it flows at 100. I'll try and give you guys a good example. You know, you can get 
it's not quite as smooth when you're running down, but if you start running flow down 50%, you can get more of a soft line to things, which I like. It's a little hard to tell, but you know, I'm just gonna keep going for it. So one of the best tips I've ever seen about digitally drawing is try and use the biggest brush you can for whatever job. So I'm going to chisel out a little bit of a shadow here. I think that looks good. I'm going to go up here with my eraser. I'm not going to lie. This is like one of the most exciting, fun parts for me is getting into this like slight rendering stuff. Because I think I've always been decent at doing line art things but I've never doing shadows and stuff was all like self-taught out of college so this is all me learning on my own time and I'm not amazing by any level but it's good enough to get me paid work every now and then which is a blessing in itself so I'm just kind of going around where I think the shadow should lie from this shoulder armor and kind of this collar here I'm trying to apply the shadow a little bit gently. Like I like with shadows trying to do a little, like here's a sharp line right here and then it kind of blends in a little bit more. And it gives you a little bit more of a shape to the overall. Like we, you can already tell we're getting more of a rounded view to things, which is pretty rad. I'm debating on if I wanna like Add a little bit of shadow in here. And then go in here and like chisel out the rest. Yeah. Let's see how that looks. You know what? It's starting to look like he's got a couple of complicated wrinkles in there, and that is pretty cool. Cool. Take it easy, Em. Thanks for watching. Tell you what, I'm gonna come over here. Nice. Is it egotistical to be working on your own piece and go, nice? think a little bit softening that up and coming in over here a little bit yeah that's nice that looks a little silky right now a little too soft in my mind but I can fix that with the rendering stuff so then I'm gonna come back over here touch which I'll probably fix this with a little bit of rim lighting I've really enjoyed using peach as a rim lighting color on things because it just kind of adds a warm wholesomeness to it but we'll see so I'm just gonna kind of try and be really subtle so I've got my brushes set up so I can basically have full tilt control over it like as an example so it's not always just gonna be a super solid color here I can also Kind of gently work into it. That's just for fun, Mark. Uh, with this whole me testing out the stream thing, I'm just trying to see what um, this looks like and what it feels like, and eventually I'll be doing official art for the game as well. But I figured for my first piece, I was like, I'm going to draw something I know. So the idea is, is I have full control over the opacity and kind of the That's how solid the color's actually going to come in, so. Oh wait, forgot. Wrong layer. I'm gonna select the flats again. 
get that out. Work on shadows again. And because this is an illustration, I'm less concerned with making it 100% realistic. And more worried about making it look cool. Because if I went for just straight realism all the time, it would be a bit brutal. <laughs> Need more angry goats. Eventually. Do we have a grumpy angry goat kind of? Oh no, we have a crazy character for the next one, Mark. Just wait. It's like, do we have any grumpy goats? Kinda. Just gonna add a little bit of shading there. You know what? Yeah. Should get rid of that layer. Short term. But yeah, you guys can already see that just from a little bit of shadows applied. All of a sudden, this thing he's wearing has a whole bunch more weight to it. It's pretty cool. Probably a little too serious. Like, you know, if I got rid of the colored line art. Yeah. It's a little serious. I'm actually going to tone that back a little bit. I'm going to use a big soft brush for it, too. Yeah. Because you only need a little bit. Now, on this side, however, we're going to chisel in freaking hard but there's not much over there so I can actually get a little lackluster on the details all rounded things still cast shadows all right got about 40 minutes left let's see where I can get with this sucker um, I'm gonna save the pirate pants this zone um, for a, probably the next stream just because it's going to be a little bit more involved but I can at least work on things like his musculature I think that's going to be easy enough to do and I'm going to make sure I don't know how fur texture I'm going to go on this we'll see it's kind of an involved process wait hold on oh I did not want all of that I want less get rid of all that there you go that looks like a good sound to me Okay, um, so I'm going to go back to my shadow layer, go back to my big old soft brush. I'm going to start working in here. I don't know why, I think I like working with the soft brush overall just because it helps kind of I can chisel in shapes all day long. I absolutely can, but there's a certain softness to it. Like I can work with how round things are very quickly, get taken care of, and then if I want to, I can switch to another brush I've got here and really chisel out things. But I think starting soft is always a good spot to be in. This is going to come in like so. What's fun is that this would cast a little bit of shadow on the bicep. Just a touch, not much. It would actually probably continue all the way down here. The cool thing about art is that I can change any of this anytime I want. I'm actually going to chisel in hard there. Dark that all up a little 
bit. And you know what? I feel like taking this chiseled one and going a little bit harder in certain parts here. Find the same thing as earlier. This could probably all be dark. And I'm going to add a little tiny bit of shadow over there. I think technically that's sort of a peck, but <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I also think this I need a little bit more. Even gonna do a little bit right here. Bam! Arms got shadow. This has got a lot of stuff kind of overlapping it, so anytime stuff overlaps something else, depending on the light source, if it's a strong light source, it's going to leave a strong line, which I think is always a smart move. Then you're also going to have the subtle shadow, which is a little bit softer to actually help with the roundness. And also this arm's coming out, so I'm going to leave that as is. Now. neck it's gonna be a little bit of a different story because he's got his head here and then on top of that we're gonna to have to have soft to kind of go around the corner of it and then I'm gonna want a good hard line here Also, since this is angling down, a little bit there. Actually, to what? I'm gonna do a hard line here. Also, I'm pretty sure this is just incoherent babbling at this point of me just going. But this is art. Thanks for watching, Russ. Take it easy. I might leave for later because I think I have to handle the tail as like one big unit. But I can still work it on the little paws.
actually, you know what? Because of the angle of how this would work, it'd probably be a little bit more of it kind of coming out. Once you get to the rendering stage, that will make a lot of sense. Okay, let me see. What can we get to next? I think it'd probably be a good idea to start working on all this freaking leather I got on this guy. Otherwise, the bitter, the bigger the arc for that roundness, the more shadow you need to use, and the more gentle that gradient is. But if it's like shorter, I don't, I don't, I don't know the best way to describe it, but you know, if it's like right, like this side of the hand, like it's not going to be much of a curve. But this big bell shape over here, it's a much bigger curve. So we're going to have to. Be a little bit more gentle with how we handle it. I may be using too aggressive a shadow here. I think I am. Let's tone that down a bit. And let's see, image adjustments, use saturation. Let's lighten that up a touch. Yeah. Just because something's in shadow doesn't mean you shouldn't render it. Shadows deserve renderings too. And honestly, this is just kind of doing single tone shadows for most of the stuff. I'll probably come back with a darker tone at some point or another and really step these up a notch. This bird here probably would cast shadow itself, so I need to darken that up. I also need to soften it up. stage is actually kind of funny like I figure out so much of the design at that stage I want something textured how I want the highlight to land all of that it kind of all happens at once 
most of this is almost grunt work to get to that point so I can make everything pretty. And as my buddy Russ would keep constantly saying recently, and that's okay. Go too heavy with that. I think part of the problem is that my brown line work on those gloves was not dark enough. I can fix that pretty easy. minutes left. See what I can get to.
and rocking a fresh fade, becoming a made man, approaching the mic stand, got the crowd tripping, shorty screaming, here go my jam, rocking it all night with flights in the morning, I'm soaring through the air, got my people calling me Jordan, and touching every soul in the city when I'm in touring, known to persuade the haters, and now I got them supporting the movement, always executing my blueprint, these plans come together when I represent music, never losing my stride, put my life in these lines, your boy is one of a kind, I leave my stamp on these times, like this the legacy, here to defend it with verbal weaponry, known to bring the fire, devour all those who step to me, yeah, so bang your head if you feel this, shouts to PR and stuff for always keeping it real, kid. Oh, what's the win? What's the win? What's the win? What is the win? Loops on repeat again, recording the truth since I was a youth in them digging when I was on the move because I was in school. I keep my fan and rep the crew. You know how we do in the BDM. My bad, he can feet. What I say, the best for last. Made in Maryland, and I'm a rapper to the day I pass. Ride to that weak shit, dog. I think I'm fast. Right. Don't so. even ask. I ain't speaking on the state of trash. This serenity's daddy rapping back in action. Line you know art wise. That's what you get for being black and rapping with a nappy head, sporting baggy fashion on your skinny slacks and sag. The vision isn't what it seems. Resistance is in my jeans. They want to put me in cuffs. Oh, that sounds good. It's just throwing me off. All right, let me see. Adjustments, use saturation. Let's make this a little bit darker. Because I think that would help. Too far. Probably about there. That looks good. That way the shadow doesn't just bleed out all the line art that's happening here.
Hmm. Well, you know what? I think it disconnected from Facebook again. Um, I think from what I've heard, let me check something out real quick. Uh, nope, wrong one. <laughs> yeah, they're disconnected from Facebook. I think there is an answer to that. Um, I'll get it worked out. Like I said, I'm not taking this too tremendously seriously, but and it's about 350 right now. Tell you what, I am probably going to call it for now. I'm getting a little worn out, which is never a good place to be when you're getting some artwork done. Um, but this has been awesome. Uh, made some really good progress today. Let me see. Yeah, I mean. Any day where I can finish out all the line work and get some shadows on a character is pretty good. Um, if I had more time, you know, I'd probably be able to get the shadows and some of the rendering done. But shorthand, I think this is good progress, and I think this is a good place to call it. Um, thank you guys so much for everyone who tuned in and checked it out. Um, sorry it disconnected from Facebook again, but look at that worked out over time. Um, I am, uh, the next step is going to be finishing up shadows and probably get to the rendering stage too, because we are making some really good progress on this. Um, until next time, uh, you guys take it easy and uh, I will be operating, let me see, it's uh, Thursday right now, right? Um, I'm getting some paint stuff, some actual physical acrylic paint stuff, super intimidating. I've already got all the paint I need and I got a ridiculous easel, like, I mean, Bob Ross style, huge, ridiculous. Um, and I've got some canvases and my actual uh, easel coming in tomorrow. I'm going to start playing around with that and seeing how that feels. Um, I'll take some photos. I'll be putting those on Instagram, which I'm at uh, Art of HF, um, which is the same as my Facebook page. On Twitter, I am Heathosaurus Rex. Not Heathosaurus Rex. <laughs> Heathosaurus Art. Um, so H E A T H A S A U R U S Art. Um, that is my tag on there. Uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe my stuff. It could help. Um, like I said, I'm not you know dying to turn this into something gigantic, but you know, growth is good. Um, and I'll be making sure to post this and other pictures and stuff from that sketch I showed off today. And hopefully the actual physical painting stuff I can share on Instagram and Facebook as well. Um, one last time, thanks for everyone who uh, tuned in. This was awesome. Um, I'll make sure to upload the video onto YouTube. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. <laughs>